I am Desi Magnaye, Junior High School Principal of Davao Christian High School, Vimapa Campus, and CVA FDLP practitioner for 15 years. In 2005, we decided to adopt it in our high school department. CVA FDLP is mainly an independent learning program. If in the traditional class setup, 70 to 80% of the class period is spent on lecture discussions, in CVI FDLP, lectures or teacher-centered activities only comprise to 20 to 30% of the class period. The remaining 70 to 80% is left for students to independently complete learning activities. We follow the four DLP program components. In a traditional class, a math teacher teaching four classes will have to be in the classroom four times. However, in the DLP setup, a math teacher can teach two to three classes at the same time with the help of facilitators. A facilitator is also a teacher teaching another subject whose main role is to ensure that the activities prepared by the math teacher are done by the students. With this setup, we automatically promote learner-centered classrooms because teachers cannot be in two places at one time. The teacher needs to prepare independent student activities, which are mostly written activities, which allow the students to discover the lesson on their own without any prior lecture. All these activities are submitted at the end of the period so that the teacher can see how much the students already know or if they have any misconceptions about the topic. Thus, their outputs are used as basis on how the teacher will proceed to the discussion to address their difficulties or who among the students need remediation. All these activities are also filed in a comprehensive student portfolio. To ensure that our students get adequate rest, we follow a midweek non-academic day where MAPE subjects are taught on a Wednesday, including other activities such as chapel hour, small group sessions, and clubs and organizations. We also adhere to a no homework policy. All these components work hand in hand in providing our students habit forming protocols to give them signal that it is already time to learn. When the crisis was ensuing, it was expected that classes would be suspended. We were fortunate that a few days before class suspension, we were able to set up accounts for our students in Google Classroom, a common online learning platform, and inform them the possibility of using this in replacement of regular face-to-face -face sessions in school. We also had to meet our teachers to make sure they are familiar on how to use it. I remember requesting one of our computer teachers to give a crash course on the Google Classroom interface. Succeeding reminders and updates were done online using Messenger or Zoom because the quarantine did not allow us to meet physically. Because we have been used to the DLP system, our transition to an online platform has been more manageable. I think what is important to emphasize here is the readiness of our students to do independent learning whether they are inside or outside the classroom. The essential things that were done in face-to-face -face instructions were still integrated in the online setup. For example, the LAS that the students need to learn for the day were uploaded by the teachers in the online learning platform. These learning activities are to be copied by hand, and once they are done, they submit a photo or PDF file of their work using the online learning platform. With this setup, Teachers can determine if students have understood the lesson and think of different interventions that can be made for the online discussion. Discussions were usually lifted from relevant videos from YouTube or pre-recorded discussions of the teacher. Teachers can also provide meaningful feedback to some activities which allow the students to redo and resubmit their work. Assessments had to be done online too. All these activities were carefully selected so that students can still accomplish them and learning continues. To address the challenge of internet connectivity, we had to choose activities which do not require very high bandwidth. In terms of schedule, 
Wednesdays were still mostly non-academic tasks and modifications were made to ensure our students and teachers are not bombarded with a lot of activities at once, allowing them to cope better amid the health crisis. Students who have missing works were contacted. Parents and guardians were encouraged to remind their kids about their daily activities too. For the very few students who have problems with connectivity, we are giving them enough time to accomplish their work, especially that obtaining physical copies is still not possible due to the enhanced community quarantine. Whether online or face-to-face, -face, our exposure to DLP rests on the principle that our students can learn concepts independently. When our students see an LAS, they already know that it is time for learning. Because of the online setup, we can say that the main teacher-student interaction happens in the LAS, which are prepared by the teacher to facilitate learning. A certain lesson can be composed of many LAS to ensure that students can learn on their own. On a survey we conducted to evaluate online classes, most of our students know that they are capable of learning independently and have put a great deal of effort in learning even in an online setup. A lot of them also said that they were challenged to learn more than expected but this did not stop them because they feel confident about learning a new material. In the absence of regular teacher intervention, peer tutoring becomes very strong and valuable. I know of some students who made use of group chats to discuss lessons and drills on their own. Moving forward, we plan to continue with our online setup given that we still cannot conduct face-to-face -face classes. Changes have to be made to provide a better structure for our students in terms of the posting of materials online, better teacher-student online consultation, and streamlining of activities to cover all the essentials. Creating an online learning guidelines might also help, as well as equipping our teachers with the necessary skills useful in online learning. For students who have connectivity problems, we plan to provide them hard copies which their parents can get from school and submit in a specified time. Thus, DLP is very much applicable with or without the use of technology. In my many years of exposure to CVIF DLP, I have always heard how it is a disaster resilient educational program because it was used in some schools in Cagayan de Oro City during Typhoon Sendong in 2011, in Bohol during the 2013 earthquake, during the Marawi siege in 2017, and many more. This year, we are all affected by the global pandemic and we have no choice but to suspend classes indefinitely. Classes have to be done at home, and with the help of online platforms, we are able to conduct our classes the CVIF DLP way. Students still write daily learning activities by hand and answer them on their own. What they were supposed to learn in school, they are able to do at home. I believe our transition to online classes have been smoother because our students are used to doing things independently. Their exposure to independent learning make them more disciplined, responsible, and task-engaged. I hope more schools can look at CVF DLP as an alternative, especially that it might take some time before things go back to normal because of COVID-19. As a formal school, DLP has been relevant to us because it has proven its effectiveness in ensuring learning even in such a time as this. A teacher can teach his or her students all at the same time and because activities are individualized, he or she can identify students who need extra help and provide the needed assistance. More than the content coverage, what we value more is developing our students to become independent or disciplined learners. When students are capable of learning on their own, they can learn anything they want, and they will not give up easily when hardships come their way.